What's good, y'all? What's going on, everybody? All right, it is time for a new series. Yes. And as voted by our Patreon community, we are diving into I'm Alan Partridge. And now, I am here for this. Yes. It's uh, the synopsis from a quick Google search says, more cracking comedy from Steve Coogan's grotesque comic creation, Alan Partridge, <laughs> who is divorced living in a travel tavern and desperate for a return to television. All right. So as as people that do create content and host stuff, maybe this will ring through right, right here. It'll probably resonate. I feel like most like comedies across the pond resonate harder than the the US comedies. Right, because that I, US yeah, celebrates more real. US celebrates escaping tragedy. UK celebrates tragedy. Yes. And that's that's where I'm like, it, it, it makes sense. It just taps into me. And I don't know why. Maybe it's just because of the three years we've been doing this. <laughs> or it's maybe just, just our own lives are maybe, full of tragedy. Maybe I'm I'm a secret Brit living out here in a, a British British way, just with more coffee and um and miles instead of kilometers. Measure stuff in uh, donuts to bald eagles. <laughs> bald eagles, man. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Anyway, before I get in, if you're new here, we're Embrace the Suck 21. Yep, I'm Daniel. And I'm Spencer. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and also become part of the community, guys, not just the channel. Big difference. Amen. You ready to go in? Yep, yeah, let's do it, man. All right, three, two, one. That was Big Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell, uh, a song in which Joni complains that they paved paradise to put up a parking lot, a measure which actually would have alleviated traffic congestion on the outskirts of paradise, uh, something which Joni singularly <laughs> fails to point out, perhaps because it doesn't quite fit in with her blinkered view of the world. Uh, nevertheless, nice song. It's 4.35. I love that. Right out the gate. I love that. He is it not paved. taking any prisoners. Paradise, but a parking lot which would have alleviated traffic <laughs> alleviated traffic or alleviated tra alleviate traffic it's a pain reducer so that's yeah, very true there you go you're I'm more than 100 just... no no i'll get there by the end of this episode i'll be at 100 i'm loading yeah. right now we'll do it <laughs> i know right? 435 you're listening to up of the partridge oh! and now it's time for alan's facts of the day Crab sticks do not actually contain any crab. And from 1993, manufacturers have been legally obliged to label them crab-flavoured sticks. Another one of those, same time tomorrow. Radio Norwich, the best music. Pray silence, please, for the Electric Light Orchestra. The string back just gives you a bit of extra purchase. Time now to hand over to my breakfast host, Mr. David Clifton, good morning to you, sir. And good morning to you, Mr. Alan Partridge, sir. And uh, I heard your phone in and uh, like your chat with the guy from Swaffham. Uh, he was a wacky fella. Yeah, he was. I, I actually think he was a bit simple. I heard you laying into the criminals again there, Alan. Uh, the vandals got to your car again. Afraid so. Third time. Scum. Subhuman scum. <laughs> it's 7am, wakey. It's the breakfast show. Here's Yazoo. Message for... <laughs> I think this is on a Wednesday, but... I think this is definitely that's, a Monday. That's a Monday for him, man. Oh yeah. my God, dude. What do you do? That's oh my God. you can do, man. God, oh man. Well, back in the day, I feel like everyone was more accessible. I feel like physical addresses and stuff. Yeah. And that was terrifying. But now, what is even more terrifying is finding their social media accounts, hacking into it, and posting corn links. Pretty much. Yep. From Alan, something to pitch to Tony Hayes at BBC Lunch Friday. Idea for film extravaganza. Plot thus. Malcolm McDowell is trapped in the future. He's being pursued by a cyberpunk from the past, uh, played by Rutger Hauer. Terrible idea. No one will watch that. I've not thought it through then. I'll call you back. He's a killer. Guaranteed to blow your mind. Good morning, Alan. How are you today? Classic queen. I'm oh, very well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> like, the, uh, like those earrings. They're gold? Yes, they're old gold. Yeah. Well, that's not really gold, is it? But, uh, they're nice. Yeah. Little wax tears dripping from your ears because they're sad. <laughs> oh. Don't cry ears. You're on the side of a lovely head. <laughs> oh. uh, good show this morning. There was a belter. Do you hear it? No. Oh. Any messages? Just the one from Bill Oddie. Oh. Did you leave a message? 
No. No, it never does. <laughs> right, well, I'm afraid, Susan, I've got some very bad news. Oh? I'm leaving you, you cow! So it's a bit of a joke there. It's backfire. <laughs> I'm basically saying I'm, I'm going to be checking out at the end of the week. Are you going back to your wife? Oh, Carol, no, God, no, no, no. She's serving uh, with uh, the fitness instructor. Yeah. She provides all her uh, sexual uh, intercourse. <laughs> Dry skin and flaking again. This man's life is just in shambles right now. <laughs> oh, no, man. So a divorcee that's trying to make it in the in the industry. Barely industry. clinging on. Barely clinging on. <laughs> How relatable. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> it's always the fitness instructor. Them home wreckers out there, man. I wish I could be a, a fitness instructor, but <laughs> my the most fitness I'm into is fitting this big pizza in my mouth. Pretty much, man. Yeah. I know, it, and that's the annoying thing. I know it, sh it it should be a main concern of mine, but it's like I couldn't be bothered. I'm just yeah. I know what to do, and I know what to tell people. I do <laughs> not practice what I preach at all. <laughs> I've just accepted that I'm I'm a BBM big beautiful man i was like what <laughs> all right cool yes let's do yeah. this sorry about the cow earlier by the way. you're not a cow and if you were you'd be a lovely jersey right for milking oh my what? god just, just talking about cows do you like milk what a delicate matter oh excuse me sophie could you deal with this sophie mr partridge as you know at the end of the week i'm meeting tony hayes at the bbc and he, he is mr numero one Problem is, I've, I've got some rude daubings on the side of my car. Can you still drive the car? Well, do you know what it says on the side of my car? Tosser. You're in, you're in the right ballpark. It, 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 um, it actually says uh, cock, piss, partridge. Is everything all right? Mr. Partridge has got some rude graffiti. Graffiti? What, in the hotel? No, no, God, there's, there's never any graffiti in the hotel. Although, in the gents a couple of weeks ago, I did see someone had drawn a, a lady's part. It's quite detailed. The guy obviously had talent. No, it's, not, not, no it's, it's on the side of my car. It says cock, piss, partridge, which is illegal. Is she new? Yes, she is. I'm basically driving around in an obscene publication. But I'd love to get my hands on the bastard. Or bitch, might be a lady. That'll take five minutes. Yes, of course. Mm. Lip enough for a fag. Don't worry about your car, Alan. I'll get Michael to sort it out for you. Talk of the devil. Uh, more of Miss Partridge? Just to Michael. Michael, I was just saying to uh, Susan, I have a job for you. Uh, unfortunately, some vandals have sworn all over my car again. Vandals, eh, Mr. Partridge? You'd like to wonder what it's all about. Yeah. Hi, vandals. What is it all about? Oh, about. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to understand the, uh, the Geordie people. What I reckon is that if they had this proper jobs, they wouldn't be up to all this, you know, larking every night. What I'm saying is they had to sell proper jobs, you know, until then they wouldn't do it. You know, a lot of them from broken homes. Oh, sorry, that was just a noise. <laughs> all I got there was uh, broken homes. And a, a broken home is not an excuse for evil. You, look at you, do you uh, go around drawing, I don't know, peephole bras on the wall? It was different for me, because like, I was in the army when I was 17. Well, there you go. They taught you a trade. Minor repairs. Hi, that and killing. Really? <laughs> oh, I've seen some terrible things, mind. What, like three men burning in a tank, going, oh. <laughs> I wouldn't want to know, Mr. Partridge. I'll be honest, I'm pretty curious. <laughs> I basically like to understand man's inhumanity to man. Yeah. And then make a programme about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, regarding the uh, graffiti, if you could uh, kill that, <laughs> I'll see you read me uh, old uh, fishy on a dishy. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do just like a quick fix on it for now. Like you've gone again. Good night. <laughs> Thank goodness <sighs> that we've checked out both Sarah Mellican and Sam Fender because I wouldn't have been able to understand anything he said. No, now I understood 50% of it. I, I did pretty well. And I don't know if that's because I'm tired and exhausted <laughs> uh, that things make more sense now, but like struggle with that. Uh, maybe it's because I had a very big talk this morning with Alexander and he sounds very similar. <laughs> My mind is trained to just listen to the noise and try to make sense. Oh man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got nothing. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Yeah, mm. Idea for a program, Lady Shapes with Alan Partridge. What? I look at the changing shape of ladies through the ages, <laughs> from fat, chubby ladies of the Renaissance to uh, hard faced Cromwellian sour pusses, right up to 20th century well toned women like Sharon Davis and uh, Jet from Gladiators. <laughs> Jet from Gladiators to host a Millennium Barn dance at Yeovil Aerodrome. Properly pleased, it must not, repeat not, turn into an all-night rave. What the hell's going on here? Would you like me to lap dance for you? I want a second series. Alan? <laughs> Fight you! 
Sorry. So come in. The door's open. Just me. Oh. Uh, there's tea in the pot. Oh, good. Do you want to come? Thank you. What have you got for me, Lynn? Well, I've arranged for you to see a show house at ten o'clock. Oh, good. Got my uh, fungal foot powder. Oh. It's life-saving. I'd effectively be disabled if it weren't for these. <laughs> I also rang all the companies on the product list you gave me. Uh, Foster's Menswear said yes if you get the second series and you wear one garment a week on air. Uh, Monza said no to a free caravan and yes to a tow bar. Dolphin bathrooms? No, they said they didn't do that sort of thing. That's rubbish. I know for a fact Martin Lewis got two power showers out of them. <laughs> one for him and one for his brother-in-law. Uh, right, a dry skin cream. Oh, my oh, God. An attack of the old uh, flakes again. This morning, my pillow looked like a flapjack. <laughs> oh. Wow. Quick practice for this meeting with Tony Hayes this Friday. Uh, so, you be Tony Hayes. Hello, Tony. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, very busy. I've been working like a Japanese prisoner of war. Oh, my God. <laughs> but a happy one. <laughs> happy one? Would you like a second series of your chat show? I think it'll be a bit tougher than that, then. We might give you a second series. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> Small talk. Would you like a Cuban cigar, Tony? Oh, yes, please. Rolled on the thighs of a virgin. I'm being bawdy, Lynn. Enjoy it. He might make that noise. Be a bit weird. Right, uh, you said you might give me a second series. Why is there any doubt? Things have to be compartmentalised, Alan. For example, in this drawer, you have, um, things. And, um, sometimes you have too many things. Uh, abandon that, Lynn. It's not working. <laughs> Doomsday scenario. You, Tony Hares, have decided not to give me another television series. Why? Be tough. Well, Alan, the ratings for the first series started poorly and went downhill from there. You being Lynn or Tony? Tony. B B Bill in again. Can I have a second series? Well, who am I? You just say yes. Yes. Thank you. They were there when I moved in. I don't know what was in there, but I, I'm afraid to ask. Yep. Don't just go into some dude's hotel room where he's been residing and start opening drawers. You just don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. It's in the terms of and conditions on the threshold. Yes, that's verse six, second parentheses of the Gaibel. Yeah. Thou must not rummage through thy man's drawers if uh, thine yes. has been living by thyself. 100%, that's quoted. He couldn't have said it, we couldn't paraphrase that better. Exactly. You, you can look this stuff up. Yep. yep. <laughs> and I'm just making a prediction. He's not going to get that second series. Well, no, because it foreshadowed, right? It foreshadowed that the dude that he's meeting with is cut in dead wood in the newspaper article reading before he went to bed and stripped right i know but i i don't know maybe just the sit that's the cynic in me that's oh we, we are solely breaking and conforming we are becoming new people yes we are one from to chroma on one oh uh, what does that say this is radio norwich uh, cook pass fa i don't know yeah, i can't read cook that pasta cook porridge I don't know, man, but I'm, I'm cook. I don't even know. But hey, hey, listen, the guy didn't say he was going to take it off. He said he'll put a bandaid on it. That's a bandaid. Yep. Big room. Oh, I like this. <laughs> yes. Certainly enough room to swing a cat in here, isn't there? Tiger in here. <laughs> you could, couldn't you? Yes. Wouldn't want to, though. <laughs> Unless it had been stunned. <laughs> even then, it's got the best part of a ton. Yeah. Do you like the room? Oh, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. so, look, look, Lynn's not my wife. Oh. She's, she's, my, she's my PA. Hard worker, but uh, there's, there's no affection. So you'd be living alone? Uh, yes. In fact, the yeah. best thing I ever did was getting thrown out by my wife. <laughs> He's uh, living with a fitness instructor. Uh, he, he drinks that uh, yellow stuff in tins. Mm. He's an idiot. Is there a neighbourhood watch? Sorry, I'm very close to uh, you. <laughs> neighbourhood watch system? I think so. Well, I'll do my stint. Mm -hmm. I'd, uh, I'd want expenses, though. <laughs> and otherwise, people start taking liberties before you're mowing their lawn. <laughs> Shall we have a look at the rest of the house? Yep. Mm -hmm. One more question. On the way here, quite nearby, I did see a, a community centre with a mural on the side. School for the deaf. Right. Does that mean there will be noise or there won't be noise? <laughs> People want to figure out that. Uh. But they're, they're, they're deaf, they're not deaf offenders. They're just deaf. <laughs> deaf offenders? Uh, not you, Link. Stay here, uh, get on the. Deaf offenders? What is that? What is a deaf offender? I, uh, I don't know. People probably turn a blind eye to those criminals. Come on. I, I, I've um, never seen a deaf school and a blind school close by. I never have. I, and I know where one of each are. I know uh, where we met, the Treehouse Lounge. There is a, a school for the deaf right next to, the, to it. There was. And 
uh, the blind one, I don't know. Oh, uh, that, there aren't really signs, are there? What are the signs? <laughs> right? What are the signs good for? Who's that for? Terrible. Sorry. That's fucking terrible. Sorry. Let's, let's push play. Oh, my God. Phone, pesta debenhams for uh, free lamps, free lampshades, you know, whatever you can blag on. Kitchen, obviously. Oh, lovely. Has this kitchen been distressed? What's this? See, there's a cast iron egg tree lacquered. Is that included? It's not a deal breaker, but I would like to know. <laughs> Everything you want, you want to keep here, it, it could be kept or not. Excellent. You can get rid of it or replace it. Excellent. As you wish, certainly. What's this little sink here? Uh, that's a rinser. Get rid of it. Which room says to me? Aqua, which is French for water. Inside an enormous fox's glacier vent. Which, again, to me, is a bonus. <laughs> yes, oh. it's an extender. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, that, that is, that's the icing on the cake. Do you know, if, if King Arthur had had. Uh, an extender on his table. Would have been a different story, really. Well, it wouldn't have been round. No. <laughs> it's very clued out, this house, isn't it? Colonel Mustard in the ensuite bathroom with a lead pipe. <laughs> Battered. I do like that toilet. It's very futuristic, isn't it? Very sort mm. of uh, high tech space age. Mm. Can imagine, uh, imagine Buck Rogers taking a dump on that in the 21st century. Yeah. Well, if I uh, have a go? Sure, I'm sorry. Can I have a go alone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yes. Prefer to go alone. Sure, sure. Most, most times, thanks. It flashed on the first yank. I love this house. One yank, gone. Little things. <laughs> little things. It's the little things. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm learning that now as this is our, our third winter. I don't even know. In, in my house currently. And I wish we would have paid attention to the little things. Not the big things. It's easy to get distracted by distracted by the big things, mm -hmm. but the little things are very important. Like <laughs> water pressure. That's yeah. a big thing. I just love a good poop joke. That's oh, it. there you go. <laughs> and that was Tony Hare's office on the phone. They put the meeting forward to twelve thirty today. When did you get this call? Three minutes ago. So why didn't you tell? What have you been doing for three minutes? You're on the toilet. Was I on that long? It was in that area. We're gonna have to zip. Right. One more question about the house. Uh, Petrol stations nearby? Shell, about a quarter of a mile. Right, has it got a mini mart? Mini mart. Uh... Scaled down supermarket fits inside a petrol station. <laughs> Sells pies, antifreeze. Yep, it's got one of those. In that case, you've got yourself a deal. I'll take the house. Well, uh, you're going to make an offer? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Uh, how much is it? It's on at 325,000. <laughs> Will you take 324? How many bedrooms has it got? Five. Thank you. Oh, my five bedroom bastard hat. Right, Lynn, let's uh, go off to the BBC. I'm going to be back on TV. I don't know if you. Uh... Did you used to watch my TV show? Oh, yes. You like it? I loved it. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> what if Tony Hare sees Cook Pass Babtridge painted on the car? Don't worry, Len, I'll play it down. Cock and piss. A table for two, sir? Yes, please. Oh, sorry, you. Name of Hare's. Like to follow me? Yeah. We managed to rectify it, though, because it, it now says, by adapting it, it now says Cook, where it once said Cock. And uh, it says pass now, where uh, one said piss, so it's less rude. Like a drink first? Oh, have a pint of bitter. Just a mineral water for me, please. Thank you, sir. Yeah, actually, actually I'll, I'll have a mineral water too. Okay. Will you be having wine with your meal? Not for me. No. No. Oh, all this wine nonsense. <laughs> you get all these wine people, don't you? You know, wine this, wine that. Yeah. Let's have a bit of red. Let's have a bit of white. Yeah. Oh, that's a snazzy book. Oh, this smells of. Basil. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to say, oh, sod all this wine. Just give me a pint of mineral water. I don't, I don't think wine's an elitist thing anymore. You can get good wine in Tesco's now. I'd love to make a genuinely popular wine programme. Can I just shock you? <laughs> I like wine, despite what I just said earlier. <laughs> At any one time, I have nine bottles of wine in my house. Really? Interesting fact. Uh, it's my weakness, I'm afraid. I've got a cellar. Mm, so have I. There's no wine in it. Yeah, it's just a couple of bikes, some smokeless fuel, and a uh, bag of cement. <laughs> Gone hard. Are you ready to order? Yes, I think I'll have the fettuccine alla alla, please. And can I have the same? But, no, with, di with different shaped pasta. What do you call this pa pasta in, in, in bows? It's like a bow tie, but miniature. It's sort of like an action man bow tie. Perfectly. That with, with action man bow tie. Anything else? I think I'll have some wine, actually. Just give me a half a bottle of Blue Nun, please. I loved your uh, article in The Guardian, by the way. Really? Yes. I love that phrase you used. It was very clever, where you said, uh, revolution, not evolution. No, it was the opposite. Evolution, not revolution. <laughs> Whatever. You know. Because that is me. Because I evolve, but I don't... This is going so bad.
God. It's I would say you get a job interview for I don't do your homework before a job interview. You lied on your resume. And and it's not the case where you're going to get the job anyway. What do they call it over there, Spence? What do they call it? A CV? A CV. Yeah. I don't know. But you still got to type your information in manually anyway. It beats the whole purpose of a resume. Yes, it does. Especially if typing is not your thing and you have to lie. Typing is definitely my thing. Oh, oh typing definitely is my thing. I can, I, I do the whole thing. Like, I, apparently that's not in anymore. Oh, yeah. No, no I don't no. think so. I'm all for uh, speak to text, right? Is that? Text to speech, yeah. Text. Well, I need it right now. Maybe yes. you just need know. AI to do it. I just need some caffeine. Yes. All right. Well, vice versa. You know, I suppose what you're trying to say is you don't want another Chris Evans on your hands. No, that is what we want. I'm your man. Th that's what I wanted to talk about, Alan, your career. I can see a lot of very exciting opportunities ahead for you, really. Oh, I, I just say, this is music to my ears. <sighs> I really... What are you doing? Pouring the wine out. I want you to pour a little bit, let me sip it, and then pour the rest. <laughs> well, I've already poured half. It's, it's all right. That's fine, fill her up. Here's to our future relationship at the BBC. I, I don't think you should see your future just at the BBC, Alan. I just think it's time for you to consider moving on to new pastures. H how have I got a second series? There's so many opportunities for me. No, 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 actually, let, let, let me, let me rephrase that. Um, can I... No, actually, I'll just repeat the question. Have I got a second series? No. Thank you. Well, what's nice? Tony! Oh, Peter, hello. How are you? Fine. Fine. Uh, Alan, this is Peter Lennon. He's revamping our current affairs output. We haven't met, but I liked your chat show. Well, thank you very much. Has he given you another series? No, he won't give me one. <laughs> <laughs> give him another series, you swine. <laughs> give me another series, you shit. I don't want you to feel that the... I'll see you later, please. Yes. I am... Um... Too bad it didn't come out now, because he would have the power of YouTube and Spotify oh, yeah. to have a podcast. It would need the BBC. Oh well. You know what though? I don't know if these old old school radio DJs would necessarily thrive in a podcast scenario. Now, now hear me out on this. Hear me out on this. Um, with the exception of Howard Stern's out there, right? Yeah. Their whole life is that. But it's just a different, a different way. A lot of podcasters and podcast channels are doing it themselves. Right. And yeah. it takes a long time for them to gain steam to be able to bring in a team that they're used to even yeah. though the radio channel probably let it i know the radio channels have let go majority of their days right yeah. these days mostly automated it's just trash on the radio those guys uh, i don't think they've they're trying to move on into a podcast realm but they're so stuck in their way of radio announcer a radio dj was it, it had its rules it had its CC compliance, all that stuff shoved down their face. They right, can't unlearn right. that. They're programmed. Right. There's not a lot of leeway for that, and they, they can't unlearn that. And these days, that form is in two parts. One, the podcaster, mm -hmm. and two, the playlist curator that is already has a social following, and independent artists have a easier way to get their music yep. heard. But I could I see Alan Partridge doing that in, in this time? I, I don't know. <laughs> We'll see over these next 11 episodes. Uh, right. I want you to feel that the doors have all closed here at the BBC. If you come up with anything <laughs> else, then please, I don't want you to hesitate. Would you like me to lap dance for you? <laughs> Where's his hair? Don't hesitate. If you have any other ideas, I'd, I'd be very interested. Got them here. Right. Chew string, Taggart, Spender, Bergerac, Morse. What does that say to you about regional detective series? There's too many of them. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, another way of looking at it is, people like them, let's make some more of them. A detective series based in Norwich called Swallow. <laughs> Swallow is, uh, is a detective who tackles vandalism. Bit of a maverick, not afraid to break the law if he thinks it's necessary. He's, he's not a criminal. You know. he, he will perhaps travel at 80 miles an hour on the motorway if, he, for example, he wants to get somewhere quickly. <laughs> Think about it. No one had heard of Oxford before Inspector Morse. This will put Norwich on the map. Why would I want to do that? Yep, fair point. Right, Alan Attack. Like the Cook reports, but with a more slapstick approach. <laughs> I'm wrestling with Chaz and Dave. I don't think so. Pity, because they were, they were very keen on that one. Right, now, you, you like this, right? Knowing ME, knowing you. I, Alan Partridge, talk to ME sufferers uh, about the condition. What? Uh, 
we, we intersperse it with their favourite pop songs, make it like to, you know, give them a platform. You, you've got to keep the energy up because you can't. Can. <laughs> don't like it, that's all right. No. That's okay. Inner city sumo. What's that? We take fat people from the inner cities, put them in big nappies, and then uh, get them to throw each other out of a circle that we draw with chalk on the ground. No, that's a bad idea. Very cheap to make. <laughs> do it in a pub car park. No, no. If you don't do it, sky work. Well, I'll live with that. Is that it? Well, uh, no, uh, cooking in prison. <laughs> a, a partridge amongst the pigeons. What's that? Well, it's just a title. I mean. yeah, uh, opening sequence, me in Trafalgar Square, feeding the pigeons, going, oh, God. No, no I'm sorry. No, stop. Youth hosteling with Chris Eubank. Monkey <laughs> tennis? There is to be no second series. And I've listened to your ideas, I've listened to them all, and I haven't liked a single one. Tony, I've, look, I've just bought a house. It's got a Buck Rogers toilet. Yeah. One yank, all gone. We don't owe you a living. You are someone who has a proven track record for making mostly bad television programmes. It's bollocks. No, it's not bollocks. Your programmes were appalling. The ratings were ninth of what we could have expected. They started badly, they got worse. Oh, your programmes. Now you're making a fool of yourself. Huh? Who, who do you think you are? <laughs> Unfortunately for you, I am the chief commissioning editor of BBC Television. Oh, let's forget about all this. <laughs> Got some cheese? No, thank you. It's quite nice. Is that a brie? Mm, smells. You want to smell it? No, thank you. Smell the cheese. No, I don't want to smell it. Smell, smell my cheese. Alan, please. Smell, <laughs> smell my cheese, you mother! <laughs> quite enough, thank you. No cheese! This is cheese! <laughs> got a programme to make. The BBC gravy train. <laughs> Wish I was. Take this cheese. How did it go? I've been battling. Oh, smelly. Let's go. <laughs> Look, man, if you love cheese, you get it. Hey, man, there's a I don't know. I like that. I like how he, he took an approach. Not an approach 99.9% .9 of people would make. See the cheese, stab the cheese, assault with the cheese, and then steal the cheese. <laughs> He's ahead That's... of his time. That's the way yeah. to go. He could have had his own prank show doing things like that. Yep. But the BBC didn't want to talk about yep. that kind of thing. N never leave. At live your life where insanity can always be a plea you know what yes, i mean exactly that's the you way know. to do it no yep. well i wasn't expecting that lynn that was a negative and right now i need two positives one one to cancel out the negative and another one you know, just so i can have a positive oh my god one can find some strength when you're at your bleakest moments if you open yourself up to new lynn i'm not coming to your baptist church you always get people when they're down I don't want salvation. I just want to be able to say, I'm Alan Partridge. <laughs> Join me tonight when my guest will be, I don't know, Chris Rea. Actually, he lives in the area. Could have had him over. Right, Chris. Hello, Alan. Didn't know you'd moved in. You just moved in last week. I'm having a barbecue. Fancy coming over? I'd love to. Do you mind if I bring my guitar? I'd rather you didn't. It's not that kind of area. Do you like mini Kievs? I love them. But my wife's vegetarian. Doesn't matter. She can have fish. No, she won't eat that either. <laughs> Forget it. You people. Come on, Lena. These people are starting to annoy me. I'll tell you something, you know, they may have very nice Tudorette-style housing, but can they order an Irish coffee at 3 a.m. in the morning and get it delivered to their bedroom? Oh, no. Nope, I can. <laughs> Come on, I'll drop me the camera. Right. Can I have an Irish coffee delivered to the room, please? Right. Tea? And a Fanta? Minibar. Right, no, I'll get it myself. Jet! Right, minibar. Oh, dear. <laughs> Kate Bush there, the lovely Kate Bush with the man with the child in his eyes. Which uh, brings us on very neatly to my next guest, Mr Stephen Bry, whose father invented cat's eyes. Stephen, what was it like oh. being the son of the man who invented cat's eyes? Well, I remember he came home from work one night very excited. It, um, and he, uh, I just wanted to people, people want to, did, did they ever turn all the lights off in the house and sort of run towards you with a torch, try, hoping to get, catch the reflection in your eyes? Well, the idea of reflection, of course, is yeah. what Dad was interested yeah. in. The idea of just the glass... Just just interrupt me there, Stephen. And it's time now for Alan's fact of the day. Most cornflakes come from the USA. One of, one of those again tomorrow. I remember I, I hit a fox once, yes, in, in the Peak District. And I, I remember seeing the reflection in his eyes just before I hit it. It was too late, of course. It was, it was, I didn't quite kill him. That was the tragedy. I had to go back and uh, finish him off <laughs> with a jack. This is Huey Lewis and the News. No, it's not. It's Kate Bush. What am I doing? Sorry. <laughs> Huey Lewis. There we go. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. I love that. This is going to be a brilliant series. This is going to be awesome, man. I can't wait for this. <sighs> it's like, I love how that last little bit had two artists that have 
are have hits in the 2020s from 80s and before both yep. Kate Bush and Paul McCartney. Yep, and, right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, anyway, dude. I I can't wait for this one. This is going to be a great one. Oh, Y'all yeah. Thanks for picking this one. This was great. Oh, yes. For YouTube, thanks for watching. There's someone around to subscribe and watch another video. Patreon, thank you for your patronage and keeping the lights on. Wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck. Unplug and do something epic, guys. See y'all next time. Later. Fellas, we can be that mistake. Let's do this.